Hi, my name is Stuart Johnston. You may know me from the media uh, reporting regarding the Oakden scandal in South Australia and aged care in general. We've decided to put together a social media campaign, including a YouTube channel, so it allows members of the public to be updated in a longer format than a two minute news broadcast allows us in the nightly news. There's certainly been a lot of reporting done over the last five, six weeks and a lot has occurred and I think of benefit to everyone is the opportunity for me to speak and update the Adelaide community and the Australian community as to the progress we're making. To begin with, I would just like to highlight um, a current reporting line number. It is 7485 4369. That's 7485 4369. That number is very important at the moment. That is a dedicated line for South Australia, in particular Oakden, but they will take calls from anyone regarding aged care abuse in South Australia. I had a meeting with the Minister for Mental Health, Lisa Vallis, today, and also the Premier's Chief of Staff. I have a commitment, and I've seen it in action, that the reports to this line can be completely anonymous, and there is something being done about each and every one of them. It is very important that I ask everyone to come forward with information if you have any now. Just in the last 48 hours, I've received personally around 32 individuals come forward to me via email, via social media, to tell their story, either from a family point of view and also a lot of workers, either past or present, who for whatever reason couldn't speak up at the time, were ignored at the time, or still have apprehension to this day about coming forward and being public. The reason for the reporting line isn't to identify people, it is to have a genuine number count. And it's almost a catch-22. The numbers are out there in the thousands, we know that. We need to have that figure reported through the reporting line so that it gives us more ammunition to call for the changes that we're asking for. So that number again is 7485 4369. If you know something, if you've seen something, please report it. We are making progress. You may have seen news reports in the last 48 hours that there has been two sackings at Oakton. I can't go into specifics regarding the staff members that have been sacked. I can't go into details regarding the staff members who have been stood down. That isn't part of a political cover-up, that is a legal requirement via SAPOL so that we have the best opportunity to hold these people accountable through the courts. And that's important because we can't allow these people to get away with it. Anyone who is found to have not enough evidence against them will be flagged by APRA and I'm still investigating the avenues that we can follow to make sure that they don't return to aged care. There are current police investigations regarding similar circumstances at Oakden this week, the two namely in the last 48 hours, and they are ongoing. This isn't just an Oakden issue. You may have heard me say this in the media reports. This is widespread. Of the 32 people that have come forward to me in the last 48 hours, at least 15 of those are from other nursing home environments in South Australia. We must also acknowledge that there are some good people in this industry. There are some good nurses, there are some very good carers. But unfortunately, the bad eggs, the bad culture is not allowing them the voice or the ability to do what comes natural and that is to nurture our most vulnerable. You will find out also in the next 24 hours that the coroner has made contact with Nick Xenophon regarding opening five families at this stage, a coroner's inquest into the deaths of their loved ones at Oakton. I had the privilege to allow a family, the Martin family, the opportunity after nine years of not being listened to, she made contact with me 
Her mum passed away aged 43 at Oakton in 2008. She had multifaceted health issues. There was nowhere else the system could dump her, so they put her in Oakton. She contracted pneumonia. She was often left in the winter out in the courtyard at Oakton with a dress and a flimsy t-shirt. She had a broken collarbone for four days and remained unreported. She had bruising, she was mistreated and she died aged 43. There was no massive coronial inquest, there was no investigations, that family's complaints were fobbed off like mine were with my mother's care back in 2008. Like all these other families were from 2008 right up until I'm getting a phone call at 11 o'clock at night from a concerned family member who has witnessed abuse at Oakton this week and doesn't know in 2017 who they can trust to report it. And to be honest, I sat there and I thought the same question. I brought this up with the Minister today. We have an endemic problem within SA Health in this government and in this state. No matter who is in charge, Labor or Liberal, the bureaucrats that run SA Health are the bureaucrats that have always run SA Health. They don't change due to an election. They're paid up to five or six times more than our average politicians also. The culture within the bureaucracy of SA Health is the issue as much as the culture in Oakton and as much as the culture in all of these other establishments where abuse is occurring. I work cooperatively with the government of the day I am asked, is this an election issue? Can this decide the election? Absolutely. Because I genuinely believe Mr Weatherall is up to fix this. Because we aren't going to let it go. And the groundswell of support is parallel, similar to the groundswell of support that led Julia Gillard to announce the Royal Commission into child sex abuse. This is our moment for aged care abuse nationally also. Mr Weatherall could win a fifth term in government by the way he handles this for the better. We're off to Canberra next, sorry, in two weeks time, 30th of May, along with Nick Xenophon. We are appearing before the Senate's Estimate Committee where there is an investigation into the aged care sector. We will have the opportunity again to put forward our families, traumas, experiences, but more importantly, what we're all here for now. Our loved ones have passed away, but we're doing this for the future and for the people who are in there now. There are crimes being committed daily in aged care. If it was a rape or a murder in an average suburban home, quite rightly, the police would be breaking down the door. But we sit inquiry after inquiry, paper after paper, media release after media release, 52 questions in Parliament, and yet another one has just been abused. It has to stop. We remain non-political, but I invite the opposition to work with us. We aren't interested in blame. We are judging the Minister and the Premier on their actions now. I proved a point and the other families proved a point on Monday. We were promised there's a couple of minor things that weren't delivered. Follow-up phone call, access to information. We called a press conference and within hours we had every media outlet and we were broadcasting right around the country. As I said, I will work with the government we will work with the government, but what should be used as a process doesn't work, hasn't worked and won't work. It is simple. We need a 1800 dobbing line similar to 1800 Respect or Crime Stoppers. We need an independent community hub to at least in each state armed with individuals with the knowledge of the Aged Care Act separate from government to take these calls. We need the accreditation process to be streamlined. 
no more five, six week notices of a pending audit. Gives them time to shampoo the carpets, shampoo the residents. Spot checks, 1800 Dobbing Line. We'll provide further update as it happens. Keep an eye on the media sites and the advertiser. There are a few other things that will be coming out over the next few days through the media. Again, that reporting line, please share this. Get this number out, 7485 4369. Thank you.